All right, thanks for the reporting on that. Appreciate it. Got another one for you this morning. Washington, D.C. just opened up its first medical marijuana dispensary Wednesday. 20 U.S. states now allow the drug for medicinal use, which raises a big and obvious question. That everyone asks when this comes up. Is it safe and does it really work when we're talking about for medicinal purposes? Well, Dr. Sanjay Gupta is here. He spent a year investigating the impact of marijuana on your body. You know, culturally, I mean, we always giggle even when we bring it up on air when we say the word, we hear talk about marijuana. Culturally, we're programmed to think that marijuana is bad for you. Yep. You've done a lot of research and think the evidence supports some, some a different conclusion, quite possibly. I, I, what did you find? I absolutely think it supports a different conclusion, and I think your choice of language is, is absolutely correct. We have been programmed. It's been sort of this cultural influence, and I take it even a step further, saying we've been misled, mm. and it's been systematic for 70 years in this country to think that marijuana, which used to be part of the United States pharmacopoeia, was a legitimate medication that doctors prescribed, was demonized and somehow bad. And there's all sorts of influences on why that happened. But if you look at even today, uh, PubMed, which is sort of our, our Bible of, of new studies, they have 20,000 papers on medical marijuana. 90, 95% of them are basically on the ills and the harms of marijuana. And about 5 or 6% are on the potential benefits. So the whole system is sort of geared toward looking for the problems with marijuana as opposed to the potential benefits. The DEA says it's a Schedule One substance saying it has no medical applications and it is a high abuse drug. Neither one of those things are true. They didn't have the science to support it then. They still don't have it now. And in the documentary, you explore that and you find you meet patients and people who with anything else they've tried, it didn't work. Marijuana helped them. So you found that it's safe. But how does it, I guess, stack up when you compare effectiveness of marijuana for medicinal purposes sure. versus more common prescription drugs that everyone's more comfortable with? Yeah, well, I, I think it stacks up really well in certain conditions. And, you know, when, when you're looking at medications, if you're being responsible, you want to look, is it safe? Is it effective? And is it more effective than what's already out there? And I think if for some conditions like intractable epilepsy, for neuropathic pain, which is something I deal with as a neurosurgeon, right. it's that terrible burning pain people get in their limbs. Sometimes there are no good options at all. And, and marijuana can actually not only be as good as what's out there, but better than what's out there. And keep in mind, these pain meds that we give people, we've talked about this, but someone dies in this country every 19 minutes of an accidental prescription drug overdose. I could not find a documented case of someone dying of a marijuana overdose. So, you know, look, it, it can be safe and it can be very effective. Okay, so there's this societal belief, you were talking about that, Kate, that it, it's a gateway drug. And that's one of the concerns parents have, that if a kid starts using it young, that's going to lead to alcohol, it's going to lead to harder drugs. Did you find evidence of that even being real? From, from a scientific perspective, I don't think there's any evidence that it leads to craving of other drugs. Do, do people who take marijuana then go on to harder drugs? Sometimes they do. Sometimes it's because of the situation we find that they're in. The same place that they're getting their marijuana is also a place where they could get something else, heroin, cocaine, something else like that. But the idea that physiologically your body changes in response to marijuana and now you have to do something else, that's what gateway implies. And again, the science doesn't Isn't stack that? up there. But some, sometimes just because we can't prove it doesn't mean it doesn't exist, right? Especially when we're talking about parents and societal mores, about behaviors. You know, and you know this very well because you switched your position on this. Yes, I, I did. Because, look, I, I, when I looked at those 20,000 papers as well, I saw all the harms sort of being researched. And that's the first thing you see. I didn't look far enough. I didn't look deep enough. I didn't look into labs that are doing research in other countries, doing some amazing research. I didn't listen to the patients who said to me, it's working for me and nothing else has. I dismissed them as malingerers. You even Just trying to get it. high. Yeah, I mean, I wrote about this. And I also took the DEA at their word. And mm -hmm. they say this is a Schedule One substance. I think we have a reasonable assumption that that's because they have science to say this is a high abuse drug. This is the most dangerous drug out there. That's mm -hmm. what they're saying by calling a Schedule One. Cocaine is a Schedule Two drug. Mm -hmm. I took them at their word when they say there is no medical applications. That wasn't true then. It's not true the now. The THC content being higher now, marijuana is not your old marijuana. Yeah. It's more deadly than ever, more addictive than ever. Did you find that? Well, it's not deadly. I mean, look, again. Not I, deadly, addictive. I, yeah, well, there's some, some concern. It is a higher potency uh, THC now. It used to be around 1%. On average, now it's closer to 8%. That's certainly concerning, and I think that that's, you know, certainly someone who's young, someone who's never done this before, it, they can have a very, very uh, ill effect from that. They just wouldn't feel good at all taking that sort of marijuana. 
That's in part because this has been an unregulated industry. People are taking this high THC because they want to get high. But this medicinal component of it, mm -hmm. people who use the you know, marijuana as a medicine, it could be very, very legitimate. And you say also that you're concerned about younger people because their brains haven't finished developing. I, yeah, so. and I would say up to the age of 20... 324. Right. That, your brains don't fully develop yeah. until that age. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend it for anybody. And if my kids were adamant about wanting to use marijuana once sometime in their lives, I'd say wait till you're in your late 20s. And don't abuse it like just with any other medicine. Right. Like any other medicine is right. the key. I mean, you know, use it, it under the advisement of your doctor. Right. I mean, that's exactly. And doctors, you know, myself included, should be should be educated yeah. and trained in this. Now, Sanjay has a special investigation to this. I hope one of the questions they answer is that Sanjay supposedly gained 13 pounds during <laughs> this investigation. Come on, come that on. Is newfound love oh, for nutter butter. No. 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 So weird. <laughs> I'm coming up with new medicines, but I'm not sure there's anything that's going to work. It's going to fix this, right? Saying, <laughs> word on the street is, my sources tell me. All right, and it is called, obviously, Weed. Very provocative title. Only need one word for it. It airs this Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on CNN. Thanks for being here. Fascinating look into this. Whose hand was that, doctor? <laughs> Whose hand was that?